welcome all of you in the last class we did we did discuss extensively the analysis of the carbon 13 nmr spectra i took lot of examples where we could analyze the spectrum based on the chemical shift and also coupling information and i wanted to show you the spectrum of carbon 13 coupled with the heteronuclei abundant spin like phosphorus fluorine etc and we could clearly see the multiplicity pattern when for in several of the examples we took cf3 group coupled to carbon will be as a quartet and then we have a two bond coupling three bond coupling like that and we were able to assign most of the things so direct when you are directly detecting the carbon the question of dilute spin does not arise at all that's what i have been telling you so in the spectrum in the analysis of the spectrum directly gives you coupling of carbon 13 with abundant spins what happens if there are abundant spins in the molecule uh, dilute spins in the molecule apart from abundant spins for example selenium silicon like that but you are detecting carbon that itself is a dilute spin but when you are detecting don't worry about that dilute uh, spin then other dilute spin can appear as a satellite for this this is a very interesting example we took this as an example with tin and i took the example and showed how the satellites of the tin gets reflected especially tin 117 and 119 two tins two isotopes give rise to satellites with two different coupling strengths and intensity was approximately equal to their abundance of 7 or 8 percent both of them are nearly equal to 1.8 and 8.4 of that order of abundance so intensity was also agreeing you are able to get the heteronuclear coupling from the satellite spectrum that's fine and when we when we have a complex multiplicity pattern identification of the carbon even after decoupling protons is a difficult job even though you simplify the spectrum by decoupling but still how do you assign which carbon is which like whether the ch3 carbon ch2 carbon ch carbon or quaternary carbon how do you make the assignment of course retaining the decoupling we have to decouple break the coupling and still assign otherwise you know if there is a coupling you can still know ca3 is a quartet ch2 is a triplet like that in spite of complexity somehow we can work with it with a enormous difficulty we can identify at least to some extent but here decoupling is there removing decoupled uh, carbon proton coupling still we have to assign the carbons based on the uh, attachment to different carbons how many number of carbons it is attached to ca3 ch2 ch like that how do we do that for that i said depth experiment depth is a, a simple pulse sequence where the proton uh, carbon 13 has two pulses on the carbon 13 channel proton has three pulses the last pulse on the proton is the flip angle pulse i said that flip angle of the pulse we can do three experiment 45 90 and 135 when it is depth 90 only chs will be there all positive depth 135 ch and ch3 are positive ch2s are negative in the conventional spectrum all carbons will be present so combination of all these things you can see identify which carbon is which very fairly it is easy to do that and i showed the example in a complex molecule like cholesterol how depth experiment helps us in identifying the carbons based on the number of protons attached to it that's what we did okay going further i also said using carbon 13 nmr we can even make the structural assignment to some molecules we took an example of one molecule and said how based on the number of carbons we had observed and you know, coupling with fluorine we could even get the structure of the molecule approximately that was easy can we extend it further the depth i'll give another one important application of depth how we can utilize depth to get the structure of the molecules here i am taking example of two monoterpenes identifying the correct structure of monoterpenes that is our challenge let us see what we do the challenge is i have to use the depth experiment to get identify the correct structure of which of these thing there are about six molecules all are monoterpenes we want to find out what is the correct structure of it by using depth experiment and a depth experiment was done for this thing now if you do the depth experiment this is a conventional carbon 13 experiment this is depth 90 depth 135 already i told you depth 90 gives you only ch positive 
and depth 135 shows you CH and CH3 are uh, positive, CH2 are negative. Just look at it and then leftover peaks is from the quaternary, from the conventional NMR spectrum. You can easily identify. Look at it, there are 3 CH3s which are positive, I am sorry, 2 CHS, CH3s which are CH3 has 2 peaks which are positive here and CH2 if you look at it 1, 2, 3, 4 CH2s because of negative intensity in the depth 135 I know these are CH2s and if you look at the CHS we have 1, 2 and 3 CH peaks and from this from the conventional carbon 13 spectrum there is only one peak which is left here that is a quaternary carbon. I know quaternary carbon is 1, there are three, 2 CHS, 2 CH3s and 4 CH2s and 3 CHS. This is what the conclusion I draw from the depth experiment. Now, our job is to identify which of these terpenes is the depth spectrum correspond which of these terpenes. If I know that I can get the correct structure using this information we will go further. Okay. Now, if you go further our job is to identify the molecule 2 CH peaks, CH 3 peaks and 4 CH 3 peaks all these things we have to identify. Look at the molecule 1 here, here you have 3 CH 2s see what is highlighted here, but what we require is 4 CH 2. So, that is not the spec structure. Look at this one again 3 CH 3s that is not our structure. Go to the next one 3 CH 2s that is also not our structure because here we needed 2 CH 3 here we needed 4 CH 2s. Come back to this one 3 CH 3s that is also not our structure because experiment shows only 2 depth experiment. Come to this again 3 CH 3s ruled out that is not our structure and come to this we have 2 CH 3s, 4 CH 2s, 3 CH s and 1 quaternary perfect that means from the depth experiment I can conclusively say this is the structure of the monoterpene. This is what the depth experiment has been done on this molecule. Go further another experiment has been done depth experiment where you can see here 2 CH 3 peaks you can see and 3 CH 2 peaks, 3 CH peaks and 2 quaternary peaks here and here. From normal carbon 13 spectrum we see 2 quaternary peaks and 2 CH 3 peaks, 3 CH 2 and 3 CH peaks. This is what we have observed from the depth experiment depth 90 and depth 135 and combination of normal carbon 13 NMR. What is the possible structure now? We will try to analyze this one. Of course, there are 4 CH 2s that is ruled out. Uh, because according to that we need yet get only 3 CH 2s. So, that is ruled out. What about this? This is 4 CH 2 that is also ruled out. This one 3 CH 3 that is ruled out because we wanted only 2 CH 3s. That is also uh, look at this one this is 3 CH 3 that is ruled out. This is also ruled out and finally, what is left with uh, this molecule is 2 CH 3, 3 CH 2, 3 CH s and 2 quaternary and that must be the structure of the molecule. So, using the depth experiment in from the carbon 13 very easily we can even make the assignment and get the correct structure of small molecules like this. So, I showed you two example of terpenes very interesting example taken from the uh, book of Niels. Uh, so, it is very 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 good example. Okay. I think uh, with this I have covered quite a bit about uh, carbon 13 NMR we about 2 or 3 4 classes we discussed at stretch and I showed several examples, several applications of carbon 13 NMR, depth experiment, problems we encountered in experiment if we are mistuning 90 degree or work, J coupling is not correct and how we can utilize depth experimental information to get the correct structure of small molecules like this. So, with this fair fairly large enough uh, information I have given you on carbon 13, we will continue further with the analysis of the spectrum of different heteronuclei. I took extensively large time for long time for carbon 13 because it is another extensively used nuclei apart from proton. Other extra other heteronuclei uh, uh, you know some other than these two are used in some you know in RN chemistry, material chemistry etcetera, but not extensively used like proton and carbon. Nevertheless, we can analyze lot of such heteronuclei experiment extra heteronuclei NMR spectra and get something 
some information from these things. Okay. We will start with the analysis of 1D spectra of selected heteronuclei. We start with the fluorine NMR. Of course, fluorine is a 100 percent abundant nuclei, spin half nuclei, very friendly nuclei like proton. Spin half nuclei are always friendly nuclei, very easy to detect and easily understandable. Further, it has 100 percent abundance. So, ex the experimental spectrum we can obtain very fast without much dif difficulty. This is a fluorine 19 NMR spectrum of this molecule C6H3 F3H2Br. Now, we have to make the assignment of fluorine. How do you make the assignment of fluorine? I, I would clearly say this is the fluorine 1 and this is fluorine 2. Why? Remember, I explained to you about the multiplicity pattern you get in the phenyl protons. Now, if you look at this fluorine and this fluorine, there is a chemical equivalence, but this couples with this fluorine equally because the one by ortho coupling of this fluorine to this fluorine and this fluorine to this fluorine is identical, it gives rise to a triplet like pattern, doublet of doublet, two central lines overlapped, it is going to be a triplet. At the same time, we also have the coupling because of two remaining protons here. That is also ex chemically equivalent. These two protons are also chemically equivalent. They will split this fluorine equally. Then it is going to be triplet of triplet. Again, each line of the triplet is a further split into triplet because of protons. So, proton fluorine coupling. So, this fluorine experiences proton fluorine fluorine coupling and also fluorine proton coupling. Coming to this, flu uh, this fluorine, fluorine 2. Interestingly, they are chemically equivalent. It can split with one of this fluorine, become a doublet. Similarly, it can split, split with another proton and it can become a doublet. So, this fluorine 2 has to be doublet of a doublet. Exactly, look at this. So, I can make assignment this is fluorine 1 and this is fluorine 2. To confirm further, we can do one more thing. We can decouple protons, observe fluorine. What will happen? All FH couplings are removed only FF couplings are retained and when we do that this is a proton coupled and this is a proton decoupled when you decouple proton all H FH couplings are removed these are only FF couplings removed uh, re retained FH couplings removed and FF couplings are retained here. So, very simply you can see this uh, multiplicity triplet is because of this fluorine you know this coupling to these two equally and these two fluorines become a doublet. So, very easily you can uh, identify and I showed you the advantage of decoupling of the heteronuclei when you are seeing such type of spectra. If there is a complexity, you can do selective decoupling or broadband decoupling of the heteronuclei. What happens if there is a coupling to other nuclei boron? The boron has two isotopes spin 3 and spin 3 by 2 and abundance is approximately 20 80. Boron 10 is 20, boron 11 is 80, boron 11 is 3 by 2, boron 10 is spin 3 by 2. When it coupled to spin of nuclei, what will happen? Boron 10 when it coupled to spin of nuclei, let us say 1 nuclei spin half, 2 into half plus 1, it is going to be 2 into 2, 4, of course, spin of course, spin of the blow boron 10 is 3, 4 into 3 is it, and of course, we have only one spin, one boron we are taking into account, 2 into 1 into 3 plus 1, it is going to be 7 lines. Go to boron 11, 2 into n is 1, i is equal to 3 by 2, 3 by 2 into, into 2 it will go and it will become 3 plus 1 4. So, if any of the spin off nuclei like fluorine is coupled to boron 11 it gives 4 lines, if it is coupled to boron 10 it should give 7 lines of equal intensities, 7 lines are of equal intensity and 4 lines are of equal intensity, but the intensity ratio between these will be 1 is to 4 because abundance is 80 and 20. If both the boron isotopes are present then what will happen you have coupling because of both boron 10 and boron 11 one gives you 4 lines other gives you 7 lines. See this is exactly what happens this is NaBF4 molecule in D2O now boron spin 3 by 2 it is going to give 4 lines abundance is 80 percent boron spin is 3 it gives 7 line pattern intensity ratio is 1 is to 4 and the weak, uh, separation of this gives you boron 10 flow uh, uh, I am sorry boron 11 fluorine coupling this is boron 10 fluorine coupling you are going to get okay. and this coupling is quite large compared to this one very easily you can analyze coupling of quadrupolar nuclei to fluorine. 
and this is a uh, information you will get center of this to center of this gives you what is called isotopic shift when the boron is sh isotopic change, change from 10 to 11 see this is the shift you are going to see always I told you yesterday also with the heavy isotope always shift the chemical shift to the higher field. Another molecule fluorine NMR again boron coupling here it is a potassium bromine CF3 4 times. Now we are looking at the fluorine so uh, does not matter what we have to worry about is coupling with boron. Now boron when it as I said there are 2 isotopes boron spin 3 by 2 gives 4 lines very e e of equal intensity and then boron 10 couples to fluorine gives 7 lines of equal intensity. So, intensity ratio is 1 is to 4 between this and this and this separation gives you boron 11 a fluorine coupling and say a adjacent separation of any of these 2 peaks gives you boron 10 and fluorine coupling very easily you can do that. Of course, we can also have a bromine there it is boron now it is bromine. Bromine has 2 isotopes 79 and 81 and interestingly both of them are almost of nearly equal abundance 49.5 and 50.5 like that and both are spin 3 by 2 nuclei. Now, in this case what will happen you will get 4 lines of equal intensity and both of them will give 4 lines both boron and bromine 11 and bromine 79 will split fluorine into 4 lines of equal intensity and equal in, uh, not only equal intensity among them also between boron uh, um, bromine 18 and bromine 17 couplings. So, this is what is happening and now we are going to see 4 lines here strong 4 lines this is 1j coupling of bromine 81 fluorine this is 1j coupling of bromine 17 is fluorine small change in the coupling is there 16 95 and 15 70 about 100 hertz difference is there and usually it is a you know this type of broadening is not observed it is a very broad because of bromine. So, it appears as if we are not resolving peaks here, but there are peaks which is not completely resolved ok. So, we, we can get all the coupling information very easily go further. Now, let us look at the fluorine spectrum of a molecule like this and this has two possible this confirmation could be like this when the confirmation is like this there are two fluorines interestingly we have a fluorine fluorine coupling here that is quite large fluorine fluorine coupling is quite large and it we it goes to be it gives us a doublet and there are two fluorine which are two different chemical shift this is f1 and f2 and each of them will be a doublet because of large separation is because of ff coupling ok this fluorine split this into a doublet first this also splits into a doublet further if you go to the fluorine 1 fluorine 1 experiences three different types of couplings one is ff coupling other is this fluorine 1 can couple to this proton and also the other proton so it experiences two different couplings as a both are single protons as a consequence this is going to be one doublet because of fluorine and other doublet of doublet because of two other protons which is three bond coupling three j f h couplings are there two three j f h couplings of almost nearly equal strength small difference is there ok. So, as a consequence large doublet is because of f f coupling and doublet of doublet is because of two f h couplings which is slightly differing in the strengths. Come let us come to this one this fluorine 2 is very interesting this has a large coupling because of fluorine doublet, but each of them has two couplings because of 3 j f h here like here 3 proton uh, 3 bond proton fluorine couplings are there two of them. So, each of them will split into a doublet. So, it is like here doublet of doublet further interestingly this fluorine also coupled to the C A 3 5 bond coupling is there and that 5 bond coupling because of C H 3 3 chemically equivalent protons each line of this doublet of doublet is going to be a quartet. So, what is the pattern you get for this fluorine 2 the pattern what you are going to get first it will split into a doublet and each line of the doublet is split into doublet of doublets because of 2 3 j f h couplings and each line of this 4 line pattern doublet of doublets and also this 4 line pattern will be a quartet 
because of phi bond coupling with pin CA3 protons and fluorine. So, it is going to be what the pattern you are going to get largest coupling is doublet, doublet of doublet of doublet of quartets. So, this is doublet of doublet of doublet DDD pattern here this is DDDQ and this is what the pattern is. Of course, when you are looking for the fluorine NMR also you can get the satellites like carbon when I observe proton I saw carbon 13 satellites. Now, fluorine is also 100 percent abundant spin off any other dilute spins coupled to it will be a satellite. Exactly, if I take the molecule like this, this fluorine NMR is gives a single peak, but this mercury, this mercury couples to this fluorine equally because there is a symmetry. As a consequence, you see on either side of this two peaks, these are the expanded version here, you can see, and interestingly, the pro this mercury abundance is about approximately 16 percent or so as a consequence very strong intensity satellites you are going to see. The intensity of the satellites can give you a rough idea about the abundance this compared to carbon that is quite large and we know this abundance of mercury is about 16 percent that is what it is and we can get even the satellite spectrum and this measure this separation if you measure you will get mercury fluorine couplings you understand the satellite spectrum you can get for fluorine similar to proton where dilute spins give rise to satellites and measuring the separation gives you J coupling between fluorine and the dilute spin. Okay. With this we will go to another interesting topic called isotopic effect. This you must remember because whenever you have to fluorine NMR be careful. Fluorine is a very very interesting nuclei. This is its chemical shift is very very sensitive to isotope effects replace the uh, one of the uh, for example, proton by deuterium effect is seen we already saw that we are similar to that the in the case of fluorine chemical shift isotopic effects will be dominant. We will see an example like this whenever you have to analyze the fluorine spectrum you have to be extremely careful look at this carbon 13 label dibromofluoromethane there are three this is carbon 13 labeled here. So, there are two, three abundant spins carb I mean uh, proton and fluorine and carbon that is labeled. So, it is also abundant 100 percent we can say. So, these are all three heteronuclei weakly coupled AMX spin system it forms done okay. and this is the proton spectrum if I analyze this I will get JCH and JFH and the CF is a passive coupling all those things we have discussed and here also fluorine spectrum JCH we do not get other two couplings we get. If you go to 13 C spectrum we get JCH and JCF, JHF we do not get that is a passive coupling. This we have been discussing quite a bit that is also not an interesting thing. What is interesting thing is the expansion of one of the peaks here one of any one of these peaks we have expanded for all the three and it is a fairly a very good spectrum very good line width. If you carefully see proton has a very is a very very sharp line single line in and line width is 0 0.3 hertz. Similarly, for carbon whereas, look at this fluorine it appears like a triplet where is this triplet coming from why fluorine peak is a triplet, but it is a genuine peak there is no other thing protons or anything for it to couple to give a triplet. Usually we say if it is coupled to CH2 some other CH2 or, uh, or CF2 group we can say it is a triplet, but there is no such thing here then why fluorine 19 peak is a triplet. We will understand that for that we have to go into what is called isotope effects. Bromine and uh, 17 and both have spin 3 by 2, both have the natural abundance of 40 equally 49.550, I will say 50 50. Both of them have equal abundance, both are spin 3 by 2. Uh, that is what I told you when I analyzed the bromine spec coupling to fluorine in the previous example. Let us see what are the isotopomers present in this molecule. One, one thing is both the bromine could be 79, there are two isotopes equal abundance, there is a possibility both bromine could be 79 that is fine. There is another possibility this could be 81 and this could be both could be 81 that is also possible. Another possibility this is 79, this is 81, one more possibility this is 81, this is 79, but what is the difference between this and this? 
can't make out. So, C A and D are equally probable. If I say there are 100 molecules, 25 percent of 25 molecules be both bromine 79, 25 molecules will be both bromine 81, 25 molecules with one bromine 79 and this bromine 81, 25 molecules will have this bromine 81 and this bromine 79. As I said C and D are indistinguishable, they are overlap. So, what happens you get 3 peaks uh, in reality there are 4 molecules 4 spectra, but this spectrum of these 2 molecules are indistinguishable they overlap. As a consequence you get 1 peak for this 1 peak for this 2 peaks overlapped will be a triplet like pattern. So, 1 2 and 1 intensity ratio you get actually there are 4 peaks from 4 different isotopomers and the peak positions have changed here because of what came the isotopic substitution that is the important point you understood now we can und understand why we got a triplet for fluorine you may ask me a question why not for proton and carbon similar effect is fluorine is more sensitive for this not for other two nuclei all right we will take the another example of cfcl3 where we can see the isotopic effect dominant here again fluorine cfcl3 if i take the spectrum how many peaks we expect? Take CHCl3 chloroform. If you take proton NMR, how many peaks we get? There is only one proton. I told you single nucleus gives only one peak, no other coupling. Forget about carbon 13, yeah, dilute spin coupling. Abundant spin proton, we get only one peak. C12 proton, C12 attached to proton, we get only single peak. Similarly, CF33 also should be single peak because this also similar to proton 100 percent abundant with spin off. So, fluorine NMR of CFC3 also should give a single peak fair enough to assume and it is true it has to be a single peak. But interestingly we get 4 peaks here 1 peak here 1 peak here 1 peak here and 1 peak here this intensity is 100 percent 1 is 95 30 and 3 true, true spectrum real spectrum how do we get these 4 peaks? Why not a single peak like CHCl3? This is where isotopic effect comes into the picture. Forget about carbon 13 is natural abundance. So, interpretation we can do like this. Before that, you should remember chlorine 35, there are 2 isotopes chlorine, one is 76 percent, chlorine 37 is 24 percent. Like bromine, we got you know 79, 81, 50, 50. Here also we should consider the abundance. One is 35, other is 30, 24, I mean 76 and 24. There are th various isotopomers we can think of. What is the possibility one? Possibility one is all the chlorine could be 35. Possible. So, 76 percent abundance, 76, 76, 76, all three are present. Then if you take the population of this, it is 4.438 multiply 0 0.76 0 0.0438. I will say this is 100, 100 percent intensity peak. Make it as 100 percent, normalize it for 100 percent intensity. So, if I take a molecule, if all the 3 chlorine are 35 in this molecule CFCl3, then I get a 1 peak, I call this intensity 100. All right. What is the possibility 2? Possibility 2, these 2 chlorine could be 35 this is 37 again 3 such possibility these two 35 this is 37 and this two 35 and this is 37 there are 3 such possibilities. Okay. Now, what is the population of each isotopomer one is 0.76 and this is 0.76 these two and this is 0 0.24 we told you I, I already told you chlorine 35 is 76 percent abundance chlorine 37 is 24 percent. So, for each of this molecule what is the population 0.76 0.76 and 0.24. So, this is 0.138, but that is not all there are 3 such possibilities like we saw in the other example bromine there are 2 such possibilities they over added the intensity added up. So, there are 3 such possibilities. So, it gets multiplied intensity. So, 0.138 into 3 you get 0.415. If this is 0.415 what is the intensity compared to the previous peak? 
I previous week I took it had a hundred percent. Normal is with, with respect to that. This turns out to be ninety five percent. Fair enough. You could assign the second peak. Now, what is the another possibility? Two chlorines are thirty-seven. One is thirty-five. There are again three such possibilities. These two can be thirty-seven. This is thirty-five. These two thirty-seven. This is thirty-five. And these two thirty-seven. This is thirty-five. Three possibilities are there. Now, what is the population? Only one is thirty. One thirty-five is there. Two thirty-seven is there. So, multiply as point seven six. Seventy-six percent for thirty-five, twenty-four percent for these two. It is point zero four four. Again, three such possibilities. Point one three two. Normalize that with the first one. It turns out to be thirty percent. Very interesting. So we got the third peak also of thirty percent intensity. What is the last possibility? Last possibility. All the chlorine are thirty-seven. Calculate the population. There is only one such possibility, point zero one three four, and normalize it with the other one. First one, it is three percent. So what is the intensity ratio you get? Hundred, ninety five, thirty and four. So there are four peaks coming because of different isotope mass. So the pop intensity of the peak is due to the statistical distribution of isotope mass. Remember. Intensity of the peak is due to statistical distribution of isotope mass. Isotope shifts are expressed always in ppb, and this is what you are going to see. Very dominant effect, isotope effect on fluorine. So I took the example of two examples, and then this is the another example. CF3, CF3 is another example where I showed population statistical distribution give rise to this. So this is the time is getting up. I am going to stop here, but I want to summarize what we discussed today. We continued with carbon thirteen yesterday, and then I showed you using depth. I can use the knowledge of depth, find out the number of CH three carbons, CH two carbons, CH carbons, and quaternary carbons, and use this knowledge to identify certain structure of small molecules. I showed with the example of terpenes, four, five or six different monoterpenes were there, which is which we do not know, but I took the example, took the advantage of depth experiment. Identify number of CH three is present, number of CH two is present, CH is present, and quaternary carbon, and find out which molecule matches with that, and we could identify that. Then continuing further, we started analyzing the spectra of many other heteronuclei. Next, we took fluorine. Fluorine is again a spin-off nuclei, hundred percent abundant. I took several examples of the fluorine. Fairly easily, we could assign fluorine-fluorine coupling, fluorine-proton coupling. And multiplicity pattern, how we get when there are different uh, heteronuclei present, fluorine coupling, fluorine, 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 proton coupling, everything, we analyze that. And interestingly, I also I also pointed out one more thing, satellite pattern, satellite peak also we see in proton in fluorine NMR. I took the example of difluor uh, CF3, uh, CF3 CF3 HG that molecule CF3 type HG, and we can see fluorine NMR. Coupled to mercury, we get mercury coupling as satellites. That also we understood. Most important point you should remember is fluorine is very sensitive to isotopic substitution. We took two examples and showed how different isotopomers can cause give rise to different peaks and there is a shift in the positions. It is very confusing. See, simple example of CfCl3 should give a single peak, but it gives you four peaks of different intensity. Hundred ninety-five, thirty, and three, and we could identify each of them and explain the intensity pattern based on the population of the isotopomers. So intensity comes because of the statistical distribution of different isotopomers, population of different isotopomers. So this is what we understood. I have stopped here. We'll come back and continue the analysis of fluorine and other heteronuclei in the next class. Thank you very much.